Hello, I am a journalist here at Buckley Squares. Nowadays, more and more industries are involved in nanoscience and nanotechnology. So today I am here at University of Bristol to meet with Dr. Anella Sadden, whose areas of expertise include fabrication of the materials on the nanoscale. Let's go and take a look. So if you could introduce yourself first. Okay, so I'm Dr. Anla Seddon. I'm a senior lecturer here in the School of Physics at the University of Bristol, but also I am the director of the Bristol Centre for Functional Nanomaterials with about 60 PhD students and 115 academics, all of whom are working in the area of nanoscience and nanotechnology. So tell us a bit about your research. My own personal research is in the area of the interplay between biology, physics and engineering. So I'm interested in the types of shapes and structures that um, biology can make, whether that be things like the structure of the cell membrane, and taking that and then trying to design something and build something that looks um, a little bit like that. What is nanoscience and nanotechnology? Nanoscience is the study of materials on and processes on a scale of one to 100 billionths of a meter. And nanotechnology is simply taking what we understand about the science and applying it, hopefully, to do something good for the world. There's a good reason that we have that particular scale. Anything that's smaller than a nanometer is pretty much going to be an atom or a molecule. Anything that's bigger than 100 nanometers, the interesting properties that occur don't actually occur on a scale much bigger than 100 nanometers. And that's because Effectively, what you can think about is if I take a big piece of material and I want to make it smaller, I end up with more of that material on the outside, so on the surface, than I do in, in the interior, so in the volume. So we call that the surface area to volume ratio. And as things get smaller, the surface area to volume ratio increases, which is really cool because suddenly the place where all the reactions occur with heat, with light, with chemicals, they all happen on the surface first. So if you've got more surface available as you make things smaller, then you've got more reactivity and more potential for really cool properties. Also, physical properties are one really big area where the scale of the object actually really affects uh, the type of properties we have. You can take the example for exa uh, of melting point. So making things smaller completely changes the melting point. So we know what the melting point of gold is, but as we make gold smaller, that melting point changes. Same thing happens with color. So a gold particle, for example, becomes red when we get it down to about 50 nanometers, which is kind of weird when you think about it, because as far as we're concerned, gold looks like gold. Do you think this technology will be warmly welcomed or widely used in the near future? It's already being used uh, to a degree. So you'll find it in quite a lot of products. You'll find it, for example, in things like sun cream. You'll find it in a lot of cosmetic products and a lot of uh, personal healthcare products. But I think the opportunity is to take science on a small scale and actually really expand it into a lot of fields, particularly engineering, uh, is something that's coming in the near future. There's a lot of work being done, for example, on materials for aerospace, which are going to incorporate nanoscale materials into much bigger structures. Also, I think in the healthcare arena, I think uh, drug delivery is a huge area that's got a lot of potential for nanoscale uh, objects to play a part. So, are there any challenges in the improvement of nanotechnology at the moment? Absolutely, there's always challenges, otherwise we wouldn't be doing science. Um, that's one of the fun things about doing science is, is, is looking at the challenges. There's a number of challenges is in how do you control the size and the shape of an object? If you want to make something really, really small, You've, and you want it to have a commercial application, you've got to try and guarantee that every single particle you make is the same size and contains the same material. That's tricky to do sometimes. And there's also the challenges of we don't know what these materials necessarily will do to the environment. We're very aware of the fact as scientists that our work is not done in isolation and that it actually impacts on the world around us. These small particular objects that we might make could potentially get into the environment and we don't know what they'll do. So thinking about the effect on uh, the fish in, in the sea and on soil and on the air is really, really important. Do you think it's worthwhile to develop nanotechnology for the society since it has got so many challenges? Absolutely. I think 
you have to pick the things that are worthwhile for the planet. So if there's a nanoscale solution to a really, really big problem, like for example, global warming, maybe nanomaterials are the way that we improve the performance of solar cells or we capture CO2 from the environment. That's a worthwhile pursuit in my book. Maybe it's in the healthcare field, maybe we can save more lives. There's also a fundamental scientific curiosity that I also think is quite important. The humans like finding things out. That's why we do science. But I think if we can take that and apply it to big problems, I think so much the better. Right. One last question. So what do you think is the role of female scientists in the development of science? Oh, the role of female scientists in the progress of science, pretty important roles. Uh, speaking, as, speaking as one of the representatives. No. I think it's really important to have uh, women in science. I think it's important to have a diverse workforce. There's been a lot of work shown that teams of people who are made up with people from different backgrounds, different genders, uh, different ways of thinking are actually more successful and more productive. And I think that the important thing is that we encourage anyone who wants to do science to, to pursue it and to be successful, and that we just open the doors to make it a completely level playing field. Certainly, we are doing a lot better than maybe we were 20 years ago in, in doing that, and I think I've benefited from that. Right. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you.